Well, hello, hello. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, oh boy, is this one gonna be fun. I hope you are ready. Sorry for that jump scare there on the uh, countdown rock music. I figured since we're taking a U.S. Air Force uh, Special Forces Operational Command livery, we had we had up the ante a little bit. So we were gonna do Linden Air Cargo, but I found a whole bunch of liveries right before uh, I, or actually just after I ended the last stream. And since we're doing a uh, military vehicle drop, I figured it would be more appropriate to use a military livery. Uh, we're gonna go back to cargo here because we're gonna do more cargo stuff. There's a Buffalo Airways and then the Linden Air Cargo is pretty cool as well, which is also a real C-130 cargo operator up here in Alaska. But we'll get back to that when we do like pallets and stuff today. We're dropping two armored vehicles at an undisclosed location. Well, it's not undisclosed, it's disclosed. It's just north of Cold Bay Airport. Um, and it's going to be absolutely spicy. Did I see the Phoenix livery, everyone, or the Phoenix video? Yes, everyone's talking about it. No, I did not have time to watch a 57-minute video that came out about 10 minutes ago. So, uh, well, I guess it came out maybe a little bit earlier than that. But uh, no, I didn't see it yet. I'm sure it'll be awesome. Um, I'm ready for it. Like, I mean, I don't need to see more videos. Like, just, I'm ready for it. And uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it, I'm sure, if we have time. This flight's going to be pretty demanding. I've showed a little picture of what we're trying to accomplish today uh, with the sky vector I've been doing my own uh, route planning basically taking this puppy up VLR nav we're gonna join an arc and then the arc is gonna set us up for our drop zone we're gonna deliver the payload and then we're gonna make our way back to Dutch Haba Alaska so it should be a lot of fun I hope you're ready for this one we've never flown this airplane on stream but it is an absolute beaut and check it out we got another C-160 on the ramp with us pretty sweet indeed so we are at the uh, Dutch Harbor from Orbex. I picked it up before the stream as well. Pretty sweet little airport here. I think we're going to have to come back here uh, and do some more flying in Alaska as more and more turboprops become available. So uh, I think a, a Southwest livery would have been lit. Oh, no, no. Gosh, I cannot even think about Southwest on this one. Um, interestingly enough, we have ATC online as well. So that'll be interesting getting our clearance from ATC because we got to do some special request stuff. So um, check out that sweet King Air. I thought I heard one. Oh, there's one over there parked over there. Check out that King Air. There's a King Air over there ready to go. That must be Team Vodka and it's King Air Beach 350 ready to go. Uh, the only thing that's not very awesome is the way the scenery is. It's like it has its own tile here, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have spent the money on the Orbix uh, Dutch Harbor. Maybe there's a fix for that because everything else is pretty much just white and snow covered. Uh, but it does look pretty sweet uh, with the runway textures and everything wet and icy. So I think it'll be pretty cool when we come back with that NDB Alpha approach. That was one of the, f I mean, you all remember FSX missions. Remember in the King Air? It's like, oh, the Dutch Harbor. Maybe it was this. Was it a C90 King Air? I can't remember, but it was like a uh, the Dutch Harbor NDB Alpha approach. I think it was like the hard level mission on FSX. So uh, we're going to do that when we get back. We're going to need to do it as well because the clouds are coming in here pretty thick. So this whole, I just realized that he painted, this livery painted over our uh, leading edge boots. That's interesting. Hopefully we still have de-icing available because uh, we are probably going to be flying in the icing conditions. So anyway, AJ said, I told you the Orbix is straight juicy. Yeah, it, it does look good. The, the, the airport looks awesome. When we take off, though, you'll see what I'm talking about, about the, like, uh, the uh, ground textures are a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's get into this, huh? AJ Fenari, I'm glad you're around for this one because uh, you've been bugging me for the past six years about the Trans Hall C-160 stream when. Uh, but here you go, man. This one is for AJ Funari, so this one should be fun. Uh, can we add fully torqued emoji now? Ooh, yes. Firefly, good to see you, man. Yeah, we're operating this as Torque 1 1. Uh, I believe it was the. Were they in West or North Carolina, South Carolina? Somewhere on the East Coast, though. So, Torque. Um, Torque 1 1 will be our call sign. There was actually a C 130 crash. I think it was Torque 6 2 or something. Because uh, they had a night vision goggle case, something jammed the flight controls. Pretty, pretty sad story. Um, but yeah, that'll be our call sign. We're gonna get into this right now. Currently planning FSX missions for nostalgia. Hey, <laughs> that's actually a good idea, Rund. That's a good idea. Do a bunch of the FSX missions in Microsoft Flight Sim for nostalgia. That is actually pretty uh, cool. All right, here we go. Into the cockpit as we go for the first time. Uh, this airplane is very, 
I, I want to say it's underrated. I mean, but I don't even think it's been rated. It's, I haven't seen it anywhere. There were a couple of videos nine months ago when it first came out, and then that's pretty much it. No one's really done any videos. I think Jonathan Beckett did a video on it when they had the new FMS update. Uh, I'm going to hide my yoke there because it's kind of uh, clicking around. Where's my yoke hide? Uh, let's go ahead and just get rid of the yoke because we're going to need to see there anyway. Um, but this airplane, from the texturing to... The sounds, the sounds are a little less good. They used to be better. I think the sounds used to be better. They're a little less juicy, I think, now. I feel like they've lost some bass, but they're still really good. Um, the flight model is really awesome, and flying it with the uh, force feedback yoke is extra spicy as well. Um, so, yeah, it should be pretty good to go. All right, here we go. Firing it up for the first time. I guess technically this could also be my first turbo prop. Ooh, TBM 350. Yeah, this one is... is uh, Joe, for your first turboprop, this one is, I mean, it's not, wouldn't be a bad idea, but it's very, um, it's different. I mean, check this thing out, man. Like, you've got, you've got condition levers. I mean, it's just, it's in, it's kind of its own beast when it comes uh, to operation. And we'll, maybe you'll get a taste of it here today. But it's a good bird. I recommend it. If you go with this one, Joe, I mean, you're probably going to like it. So what altitude we're going at? I filed 200. Uh, I hope we'll be able to make it in time. We'll have to revisit that. But here we go. Let's get this airplane fired up. Uh, we're going to go battery one, battery two. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Transol. We'll go ahead and cancel that caution out right there. Uh, get the battery on. We'll get my EFIS powered up. Get these puppies powered up. Uh, we're going to go straight to an APU start with this one here because we want to get the APU on so we can open up the cargo door. So to do the APU start, you can see right now our batteries are discharging here. We're going to come down to the fuel panel here and we're going to open the APU air inlet. We're going to get a green light there. That means that uh, we are ready to go. Uh, once the APU air inlet switch is open, we'll go ahead and start. So the low oil pressure light and we'll go ahead and monitor the engine start up here with the RPM. They definitely changed the APU sound. It used to be way better. I think it's more realistic now, but it's pretty weak. You can barely hear it. I'm not even sure what the APU is, to be honest with you. I'm actually not sure what the APU is. I'm not sure where I'm getting that aileron flutter there. There you go. Oh, you know what it was? Because my yoke was sideways. I think that's what it was. I got my yoke is straight. All right. <clears throat> With the APU up and running, we're going to come over here, and I'm going to select the G5 breaker. G5 breaker is green. You'll see now that our amps have gone to zero, and we are on generator power. And I can also run this over to G5. You can verify what's going on there. Now, with that on, I'm going to go ahead and get the position lights on. We're going to get the wing light formation lights on as well because they look juicy on this airplane. Uh, operator lights are coming on. And there's about 50 different uh, light knobs in this thing. So let's get the lights on in here. That's coming down the overhead here. We're going to go day pilot lighting. I'm going to turn this little flood light on right here. All right, with that on, I'm going to come down here. We're going to turn this puppy on. We're going to get the white on here, and we'll get a little UV in there. Oh, yeah, that's what I like. We'll juice up these lights here. Looked like AP was left side near gear bay. That might be right, actually. I, I might have been looking in the wrong spot. Let me go ahead and get all these backlits on. I mean, the texturing, though, this airplane, it's really darn good. If you remember, I did a video, well, probably a, a little over a year ago now, uh, about this airplane when it first came out. I mean, but just look at this paneling. Like, this is, it's pretty cool. It's definitely old school. It's got that old school rustic vibe to it for sure. I'm going to go ahead and move you to the on position and we'll turn these lights on right here. Those are the white lights right here. All right. Now we're up and running. Let's see here. Where was the AP? Was it over here? Oh, yeah. You know what? You might be right. I think, oh, I can't. I think that's it. I think that is it right there by the left landing gear. All right, with our APU, we're going to open up our uh, aft cargoes. Oh, you know what? I should have stopped that because we got to lower the fuselage.
Actually, we need to do a, a lowering. So we're gonna we're gonna squat the aircraft. So what's gonna happen is the ramp is actually gonna come up a little bit, and then we're gonna squat so we can load the VBLs. Pretty cool. Now the only problem with squatting the airplane like that, now all my views in the cockpit are off a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it'll get better. How'd you get your Iveo to use your different aircraft models? Brian Valdez, I'm just using um, the MTL. I'm not sure, I'm not using anything special, man. I'm not using anything special. All right, we've got our airplane, uh, we've got our nav lights on, right? We turned those on? Yes, we got our nav lights on and our ramp is open. So that's all good. Now let's come down here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, start our alignment here. Now it's gonna get on battery. I don't believe, now this is my question. I haven't been able to find the answer to this. I don't know how to get the INS off of battery operation. The only way I can get it off of that is when I turn on an engine, when we get an engine up and running. So uh, you'll see here that it's in align mode uh, and hopefully it will align and then the battery operation will stay on. Uh, even when we're on APU power and the batteries are not discharging. Now, let's, let me check real quick. If the batteries discharge, well, they are discharging a little bit now that we turned on the IMS. So maybe there's a, uh, maybe there's something going on with that there. But I, I am, oh, you know what else I need to do? Is we also need to do this, duh. We gotta get those transfer switches down so we can uh, Utilize it now. I think it'll still be yeah. You still see zero. It still says battery operation, but anyway. Uh, nicest EFIS EHSI Canadian. I agree. This is the nicest uh, EHSI EFIS I've seen as well. I mean, it is modeled so well. Now, I also went with this livery because I like the black panel. A couple of the other liveries that I downloaded, they all have gray panels. I don't know if that's for like the new C-130s or maybe that's what the U.S. Air Force has is gray panels. I don't know, but I like the black paneling. I don't like the the ones that changed it. So we're going to rock this livery for today. Mr. Anderson, very underrated indeed. Yes, it very it very much is underrated. Okay. With that all done, we need to come back in here and you know what? Let's go ahead and load up the airplane first. So we're going to take a VBL1, a VBL2, and then we're going to uh, raise... We're gonna raise the aircraft back up because I don't want to sit there with my views all jacked up. So we'll leave the uh, we'll leave the uh, cargo deck open, but I'm gonna raise the aircraft now, and we'll just leave it open, nice and get some fresh air in there. But now my views will all be centered again, okay? Because that was gonna drive me nuts. All right, that is done. Uh, let's go over to our fuel. Our fuel looks good. That's how that's how much we got on board. So what is our weight? We're 47 tons. We max is 51. So that's fine. I wish I could change this to pounds, but I can't. Uh, I have sink cargo with payload manager. So when we drop these VBLs, uh, our weight will actually drop as well. Now we probably could get rid of some fuel, but just in case we got to do a go around or we have to do, we're going to keep the fuel on board. We should have uh, plenty of range. Uh, if we have to either go back to an alternate, technically our alternate is back at Cold Bay. Now, you can uh, outfit the cargo bay with seats and take troops, boxes, barrels, all kinds of stuff. We'll actually turn on the cargo light. Um, let's take a look inside the cargo compartment. So you can see here, we're all loaded up. We got our tie-down straps on. And we are pretty much good to go here as far as cargo is concerned. We need to get the rest of the aircraft aligned. So. Uh, we'll kind of just stay here. This is the load master view. Everything looks good. We had a few transals at BA 181 Bourbon Island. <laughs> uh, yo, Dad, what's up, man? All right. Now for the fun part. Programming this FMS. Now, if you guys do not remember T9 texting, I'm about to blow your mind. So uh, let's go ahead and start with our flight. Uh, our flight is going to be torque. We're going to put in T... R Q 1 1 enter see how I did that now I'll explain it so let's go to the from 2 so when you highlight the from 2 you have to select the letter and at its position so our departure is PADU P-A-D-U so P is number 6 but we want the first 
letter, so we're gonna hit this button that's gonna change it to P. We want A, that's one, but we want the letter A. D, we want the letter first one, D. Now U is gonna be the last one, so we want the third. Now we've got Paddy on there. T9 flashbacks. I used to text under the desk. Like I could text the whole message out with very little errors doing T9. That's how, I mean, if you remember doing that, then we're probably close to the same age. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, then <laughs> you, uh, you missed out. You missed out. All right, so Padu to, and we're actually going to go back to Padu. So this is round robin, P-A-D-U. So Padu to Padu, we're going to enter that. Uh, tactical, I don't believe, works. Uh, we'll go here, Padu. Now, you could expand it. We get our lat long, elevation, and runway, and SID. Now, there are no SIDs to select. And if you can't select a SID, you can't select a runway. So basically, we're going to leave that blank. This brings us back to our flight plan. So it's basically padu padu. But what we need to do is we need to change this. So I'm going to highlight padu and I'm going to select change. Insert before padu. That's what we're going to insert before. And we're going to this uh, CDB VOR. So Charlie the third, D the first, Bravo the second. And we're going to hit enter, confirm enter, boom. So now we have the CDB, which is Cold Bay VOR before our return. So we have a backed up FMS flight plan. Now technically, um, I mean, you can load, I think you can load airways in this too, but you can load SIDs and stars and all this stuff, but we're really just using this for additional situational awareness today. What we have to do is we're gonna end up joining a 30 DME arc to come around and then we're gonna join a radial inbound drop and then return back to our uh, home base here of Dutch Harbor. So. Uh, but I'm putting this in here for situational awareness. So CDB VOR, not the airport, is in our flight plan. Cool. So that's done there. Uh, we can go ahead and go back to our initialization. Everything looks good. Let's go to our radio comm. I believe uh, Iveo is online here. Alaska. What is it? Alaska. What's Paza Center? Someone tell me what Paza Center is. PAZA 25.7. So 1257. We'll throw that in there. 122 decimal 8. Uh, we'll also throw that in there. And then I'll. Oh, nope. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to transfer that. Dang it. 12280. Enter. Okay. Now we're going to transfer. And then I'm going to switch this one to. Uh, what did I say the freak was? One two five decimal seven zero. One two five seven zero. We're gonna enter that sucker in there. So twenty five seven Unicom on standby. Our brother service is terminated. Monitor Unicom one two decimal eight. Have a wonderful day. We found as your observation aircraft. Oh great. Steve needs a rotary phone. Cargo hold. Hey Steve. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate you. Brother service is terminated. Monitor Unicom. Thank you for the support, man. Five months support. Appreciate you, dude. All right, radio navigation. We got to load up some other stuff here. So let me pull up our Navigraph so you can take a quick peek with me here. I've kind of made this as best I can so we can look at it. But basically, we need to load in the NDB, the Dutch Harbor NDB, which is 283 because we're going to use that when we come back. So to put 283 in there, move this over. I'm going to hi highlight this down to ADF, and we're going to be 0283 enter and to verify that that works i can see my adf needle over here it just moved in its position so i know we're actually getting adf right now uh, which we should be on the ground all right with our adf tune the last thing we need to tune is our vor which you guessed it is going to be cold bay we're going to pick that one up in route uh which is going to be one one two decimal six that's the cold bay vor so let's go ahead and highlight nav one, 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 two, six, zero, enter that. That's cold bay. We're not going to receive that on the ground. Now we can uh, load in Dutch Harbor. I didn't even realize there was a VOR here on Sky Vector. So it's, it's on Navigraph. This could help us a little bit. 113.9, uh, is that just a DME station? 113.9, let's see. Well, that's already in, uh, let's go nav two and let's transfer it over. Actually, let's do, let's uh, back it up first. One one two 
six zero enter and now let's transfer one thirteen point nine er. So I got thirteen nine, but I've got nav one as a one twelve point six and the number one. So that looks good. Our nav radios are set there. Let's go ahead and get rid of Navigraph. I need some water. You guys having fun yet? I'm thinking of renaming my channel to Lightspeed Simulations. Yeah, knock yourself out, man. Knock yourself out. All right. Mr. McDew, 12 months of support, man. One year. Congratulations. Thank you for the support. Glad to have you on board, my man. Appreciate you. Okay. Now, I need to come down here and rebind this view. We're going to have to bind uh, instrument flying view. So I got to bind an extra view here real quick. This is going to be our uh, IMC panel right here. And I'm going to save that as that view. Okay, so what we need to do, we got to fix up our uh, situation here. So I'm going to, if I move this to map mode and I zoom the range out, you'll be able to see what we got there, FMS version. Cool. I'm going to zoom the range back down and I'm going to put it on uh, arc mode. Nav 1, there's Dutch Harbor. Uh, nav 1, Nav 2 is VOR 2. Nav 1, I want to be on FMS 1. And we want this in HSI mode. So my pink needle is FMS 1. VOR 2 is going to be on, or the second course knob is on VOR 2. And I want to display ground speed up in the top right. So ground speed's up in the top right. Uh, you know what? Actually, wind might be helpful when we first get airborne. So we got wind air up there. We're going to have wind in the top uh, right. That all looks good. And I'm going to put this on active. Beautiful. Now, the one other thing we have to do before we get fired up here, we got to make sure our... Golly, what's up with my view here? we got to make sure our VLOC is in nav mode if we want to plan to follow the FMS course to uh, CDB until we can pick it up. So... That's pretty much all done. We need to go ahead and call up uh, Alaska here. And let's get our clearance. Mediterranean 318. Uh, confirm, are you established on the localizer? Confirm, uh, <clears throat> I'm established on the localizer. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, reduce the minimum practical speed. You are very close to the company aircraft, about 600 miles. <coughs> we'll close uh, up half the cargo bay. If you are unable oh, to cool. reduce more, please advise. Reduce the minimum speed. Uh, All right, so we got a small door open. And keep descending, sir. Uh, I see that you still have Skyfall, thanks for the $10 super chat, man. Appreciate you. Brings back memories of my hoo hoo hookah <laughs> days. Hey. Skyfall, appreciate the support, man. Thank you for the $10 super chat, man. Too kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What is Paza Center? Uh, Sir Chief, 080 Papa, confirm, are you in the um, Alpha document? Anchorage, Anchorage Center, that's what it is, Anchorage. Anchorage Center, good afternoon. Torque 1 1, US Air Force C 160. I'd like to pick up our clearance to. Uh, uh, it's actually back to, uh, back to here. Okay, Air Force, uh, confirm your call sign will be sealed to US Air Force. Uh, call sign is Torque 1 1. Torque 1 1, uh, Roger. Uh, you are clear to Dodge Harbor via right turn to red call bay. Initial climb to 15,000. Spec flight level 200, zero, zero, minutes after departure. Departure frequency Anchorage Center and your squad is 1704. I'm cleared to Dutch Harbor, a right turn, direct cold bay, 15,000. Five, flight level 200 zero, zero in 10 minutes. Departures with you, squawk 1704 for torque 11. One, one. Torque 11, one, one, reback is correct. Call me when you are ready for pushback and aim setup. I see that the, both Air Chief already have the experience and are your uh, uh, wingmen for today's flight. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess we're, uh, I didn't realize there was going to be another flight with us, but yes, that'll be correct. We'll give you a call when we're ready for engine start and push. 
Okay, thank you, Ada. Mediterranean 1, uh, I'm sorry, Mediterranean 3, 1 8, uh, winds. Uh, no. All right, so right turn direct, cold bay, CDB VOR, 1 5000 initial, and then uh, we're squawking 1704. So we need to get a squat code in here, which is going to be up here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this puppy on, and we'll go into normal. This is actually an IFF. Uh, but we're going to change the squat code here, if I remember, 1704. That's what we got. I don't think you have to hit enter, but that's mode one is going to be our uh, transponder. I think that's what he needs. So that's going to be set right there. All right. We're all set up there. Let's close up the rest of our shop. So we're going to, oh, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to close both of those. We're going to close those doors back there. Uh, let's come over here. We'll uh, walk down, verify with the load master that we are good to close up. So everything looks tidy up in here. We verified all the tie downs on both sides. That looks good. All right, we're ready to get out of here. Let's climb back up into our flight deck. And we're going to start with, uh, actually, we'll close that door up, too. Doors are closed. Cargo light is off. I'm going to open up this window for start because it's extra juicy. We're going to go ahead and get our anti-collision light on. And let's go ahead and pull our covers. i got to bring back that EFB real quick. I'm going to go over here. We're going to pull the covers off. All right. Oops. Hey, affirmative. And Alaska 184, uh, confirm are you ready for the pushback and engine setup? Now, there is a way to set Re the Ready for push and engine setup, Alaska 184. Uh, I don't remember how to get there. Out. There we go. 1 5,000. Radio comms are up. Anchorage Torque 1 run ready for push and start here at the south ramp. Uh, Torque 1 1 uh, taxi to runway 3 1 via taxiway Alpha backtrack. Once the 180 touring is complete, call me when you are ready for departure. Okay, sorry, yeah, we, uh, we're calling for start clearance, but yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call you when ready to taxi at Torque 1 1. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, you are clear to start. Uh, uh, and start, call me when you are ready for push. Uh, I'm sorry, when you are ready for taxi. Roger, right, we'll call you ready to taxi, torque 1 1. All right, here we go. So for engine start, uh, verifying the overhead looks good like this. Mediterranean uh, 226, uh, wind. And those red lights are degrees, normal. Two, three, just want to make sure we're on uh, APU power, seven, which we are. Let's go ahead and uh, mute the mic for a minute. We'll go ahead and get our fuel pumps on. So we got four A's and B's. So two A's and B's in each tank. That's all set. I'm going to move my engine start levers to the start position. You can see they have mechanical buttons, which is pretty cool. So as you move the lever, it mechanically changes. So we're in the start position there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move this to the start position. We also want to make sure our APU bleed air is on. And now, theoretically, if we press this sucker down, we're going to turn in number two. So you'll very faint here. The engine spools up. Wait for about 20%. And fuel on. Now she's turning. this number two lever to run. 
Our number two lights are out, oil pressures, everything looks good. Start light is out, let's engage number one. Monitor the RPM. There's 10, 15, 2, 1. The windows, the windows are open. I'll show them here in a minute. That's too cool to not start with the windows open. All right, number one is started. Bring that up to run. Let's go ahead and close up the windows now. All right, we have two good engine starts. Let's go ahead and get generator one, generator two, inverters or transfers off, generator three, generator four, both of those transfers off. That all looks good. Batteries are no longer uh, no longer discharging. I'm gonna turn this to the off position. We'll get a red light there. That's normal, we'll get that here in a second. Let's go ahead and get our heat. So one, two, pedos or excuse me, the canopy heating, we'll get that. The sides on, all those are on. Transfers go to auto. That looks good up there. We'll come down here and we will shut off APU bleed and then we will shut off the APU inlet. When you close the inlet, that will spool down the APU master or we'll spool down the APU rather and then you can see here that the APU is going to spool down. That all selected will select flaps two for departure. All right, we'll depart first. Thank you, Team Duncan. All right, so that's up and running for trim. Now this is cool. So in the real airplane, the yoke moves with the trim. Uh, and actually, now that I've got it, let me turn the yoke back on. Let's see. So let's go here. Show the yoke. Now, if I run the trim, see how the yoke moves with the trim? And it does the same with the uh, force feedback, which is really, really cool. Uh, you see a little bit of vibration in the yoke right now. And I'm going to run this to one. There we go. About one. We'll go ahead and hide the yoke as well. So that's done. We've got propeller dust and vortices. Cool. We're all set up there. Uh, actually, we're looking good. I'll hide the EFB until we're out of here. We are ready to taxi. So, taxi light. Down. Listen to that. That is awesome. I mean, throwing out 1544 are just probably Anchorage Torp 1, we're ready to taxi. Torp 1, 1, confirm, are ready for taxi? That's affirmative, Torp 1, 1, ready to taxi. Uh, Torp 1, 1, taxi, runway 3, 1, and via Alpha, backtrack, runway 3, 1, and 1, 180 is complete, call me what you are ready for departure. Taxi 3, 1, via Alpha, backtrack 3, 1, we'll call you ready for departure, Torp 1, 1. Here we go. It's running at 1544. Got to love it. So we are cleared to backtrack on 3 1. So let's get the rest of our lights on. So we get landing lights. Those are coming on. We're going to get the. I think everything else is on, right? Let's get our methanol lights on for alcohol, water, injection. We probably don't even really need it, but it's fun. So it's coming on. 
We're entering 3-1 for back text. So we're gonna roll on here. The big blue handle? <laughs> Gear level, man. Five greens. So I think this is a little, uh... Oh yeah, this is just an entry right here. But if I go out to the left... Do a 180 turn on the runway and a C-160, what could go wrong? Do it between the lights. Uh, let's turn it over. If you like this kind of stuff, if you like the trans all, make sure you smash that like button because we've never flown her before on stream. Come on, baby, turn it over. Bye, Captain. Turning radius required. We'll bring it right here on the uh, threshold. We'll have plenty of runway. All right, flaps are set, trims are set. I'm trying to set my view properly here. Lights are on, flaps are set. Let me check this panel down here. I want to go uh, weather into standby. It's going to warm up. So we'll get that ready to go. Anchorage torque 1 1 in position 3 1 with the pickup. Torque 1 1 and wind 340 degrees. One, uh, I'm sorry, 340 degrees, uh, 8 knots to runway 3 1 and clear for takeoff. Three one cliff take off torque one one. All right, it's going to be a right turn, right turn direct CDB. We're going to make it about three six zero. We'll leave them in low idle for the time being. Let's go ahead and bring them up. So we're, we're pretty heavy. We gotta watch our AOA here. So keep about 10 degrees. Trim it down a little bit. He wants us on initial heading of 050. So I'm gonna spin that around to 050. About 12 degrees right there. Let's go flaps of one. Coming through 140 knots, a little bit of chop. 10 degrees, still holding that. All right, now we'll 
Clean it up, flaps up. Let's go. Kill the AWEs. And we'll do one in four and get back to the ready for the You see we burned quarter tank of AWE on that? One in four. Alright, zero five zero. Alright, Alex, we're gonna start climbing up. Let me pop my EFB up. I wanna pop my yoke up so I can get the uh, flight director online. So flight director is here. Turn one to one zero. And I gotta change, I gotta come to my uh how that yoke's in the way. This is the only problem with this airplane is there's a lot. Gotta like have a lot of different lightings. Alright, one one zero on the heading. I sent our uh, air chief uh through eight zero. Papa uh one man is uh, ready to go, I'll be following it as well. Uh, zero eight zero Papa will be the, the team leader here. Okay, our chief is zero eight and zero There's Papa. There's CDV on the map, so it looks like he's wind. giving us headings to join that. Three four zero degrees eight knots zero one three one. We are for takeoff off your departure. Turn the right heading zero four zero. All right, zero three. Three one zero takeoff zero four zero takeoff. Your chief zero zero. Zero. I'm going to one one and spec uh, space on the final turn to rejoin the formation with your bold uh, women. I'm sorry, say again, torque one one. Yeah, in the next turn, spec base on the final turn to join your bold women. Torque one one, Roger. Alright, so. One one zero. I'm gonna go ahead and get the autopilot on now. We'll get counter at that little aileron trim. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, a little more rudder, a little more, a little more a little elevator trim. Jeez. Two hundred knots. Beautiful. All right, let's go. AFCS on. Alaska, heading one select four winds one three zero degrees one Our flight director is on. Our heading mode is on. Full screen cam. We are for takeoff. Very good for takeoff. Runway one five. Alaska, one eight. Five hundred feet per minute. We're looking good. I'm actually going. Torque one one. Turn right heading two three zero. Right turn two three zero. Torque one one. All right, spin around two three zero. So I, the good thing we took extra fuel. So basically, he's turning he's turning us in a pattern here, so the uh, the rest of the flight can join up. CS heading select. Torque one one turn right heading three five zero. Continue your climb to the level two zero zero. Right turn three five zero. Continue climb to level two zero zero. Torque one one. Our chief is zero eight F C 
Uh, yeah, Brian, I'm going to look at that again here. I'm, I'm just going to pitch up here and get out of these clouds. 180 on the speed there. Don't need to climb it out at 250 knots, I guess. All right, 350, and we're good to 200. Tuner, triple seven heavy, over Dutch Hardware EOR. Call me when you are ready for descending to our attack. All right. Now. Alaska 184, right turn, dread, echo, November, Alpha, VR, continue your climb to flight level 340 without restrictions. Roger, right turn, uh, echo number Alpha, and continue climb to level 340 under yeah, strict dread. Restricted level 20. Yeah, it'll engage without the flight director, but the it's not even engaging the flight director. Like if I do AFCS on, it just ticks off. Let's see if it got bugged out. Well, that is bizarre. Never had this bug. Red Cold Bay, Torque 1 1. Hmm. Air Chief, uh, 08, uh, 0 Papa, right heading oh. 110. Vector, sleeper 7, do you want to company aircraft? Wait, yeah, you're right, I think. Right 110, vectors to uh, join the flight, uh, Air Chief, uh, 08, 0 Papa. I think maybe it's the uh, wrong. Uh, Autopilot Disco key Canadian. I think you're right. Hold on. Let me get her trimmed out and on heading here. Uh, so we're going to Red Cold Bay. Let me bring my heading bug around. I think you're Chief 105. I think you're right. Your team leader in the heading 110, please. 110, 195. Heading select. Okay. Okay, I think you're right. So now, because I just double tapped it, um, that's all set. And I need to come back down here. I need to go to Alt. We're going to 200, which is already set. Good. And we are heading on. Excellent. All right. We're good. That's what it was. It's that stupid autopilot 
disconnect button? What is the proper autopilot disconnect button to bind? Why is that so Shift, uh, zero eight zero Papa one hundred five uh, left turn to red Colby Vilmore. I've never and been in a simulator where it's more. so For me, confusing to, to you, bind the autopilot uh, one disconnect. Four thousand feet. That's what it was. Is the autopilot disconnect key? All right, uh, left turn, uh, it's a uh, direct cold day. And, All right, uh, let's see if we can pick up cold day. So we're in heading mode. I'm going to go back to uh, HSI mode here. If I change VUR1 and I do push to center the course, we're tracking. Excellent. I'm also going to come up here. Uh, we come up here, we're going to go back into VLOG mode. VLOG and radio nav is engaged. So now we're tracking outbound. Excellent. Well, we're trying to. Well, why are you going right? Come over here. Let me center up uh, course select number two. Radio. Six on that two, transfer that over. We center this one up. Those are all centered. All right, we're all centered. She just did a little less turn. All right. Jeez. Autopilot disconnect. There's about 42 different autopilot disconnects. There's toggle autopilot disconnect. There's autopilot. Uh, there's autopilot disengage. There's autopilot master. I just bound autopilot. I, I bound toggle autopilot disconnect, which is clearly not the right one. Clearly not the right one. Okay, we're cruising now. Let's go ahead and get rid of. We'll leave the formation lights on. We'll go ahead and get the taxi light off and the landing light off. That looks good. Okay, we're 134 miles from Cold Bay. Beautiful. About 100 miles from the arc, 140 knots. We're pitching out 1,000 feet a minute. Now we can finally take a breath and look outside. That was all kind of whacked out. But we're good. We're back on track now. Archie, one enter five. Uh, where are you going, Captain? You feel in a heading? Why one through it? Adobo logic. I know. All right. Why is there more than one? Uh, yeah, I know, J, J Foot. Why is there more than one binding for autopilot disconnect in the first place? We got our wing lights on. Uh, wing lights are coming off. All right. Stand by. One in five. All right, there's 18 thou right now. Magic barrel ref key set. Should be 101, 1, 10, 13, right? A standard pressure, so we'll do 10, 13. All right, once we get up to 200, we're going to go ahead and level off and cruise, and we'll brief how we're going to do our uh, setup for our drop. I still have trouble with autopilot disconnect with the Phoenix. I don't know. One autopilot switch through them all. I agree, Mr. Anderson. Sean, I, yeah, I don't, I have to, I'll have to check to see which one is bound for my Phoenix, because that one works for me. Uh, I got a few clouds, so I'll have to call you at the traffic and say we do not have visual on them. FSUIP CS not upon master it works great for aircraft that I fly minus Phoenix, but FSUIP has its own Phoenix preset, which is nice. interesting. I just don't know why they have, like someone said, I don't know why there's multiple to begin with. Like, it should be autopilot disconnect. Here, end of story. Alright, 194, let's see if she actually levels here. I don't know if that's supposed to be armed or not. Alt. All right, good. It is engaging. And it's leveling. Cool. We'll get rid of the EFB. We're leveling at 200. Okay, bro. Let's go 184. We can take the left 190. I love the outside sounds. Thank you. 
I use the cockpit joystick disconnect. That's the best way to do it, I think, Canadian. I probably should have done that. Probably should have done that. All right, we're level at 200. We're 122 miles out. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're actually going to do here. Let's take, uh, we gotta do, so we're 120 miles out. So what we need to do is we need to join a 30 DME arc uh, to the south off Cold Bay. Once we join that arc, we're going to continue to arc at 30 DME until reaching 148, which is going to be the okay, 328 inbound. past Frosty Peak. Yeah. So a 30 mile arc is going to start right about here. We're going to join the arc. We've got to be at 3,000 for our drop too. So we got to calculate our top of descent. We're going to join an arc. We're going to arc around Frosty Peak to join the inbound course. Once we get on that inbound course, we have to be at 3,000 feet. We've got to slow to our drop speed and we also have to uh, make sure we are pressurize which I think I think we will be right because we are where is okay yeah so we'll have to make sure we depressurize and uh, open the doors at 3,000 we'll slow to about a hundred and I think 160 knots is where we want to be and we got to drop at 3 DME on that radio we got our work cut out for us. So if we want to descend, or if we want to join a 30 mile arc, and we got to start down at well 3,000, we can descend to three while on the arc. That's fine. It's only 36 miles. Yeah, that should be fine. So we'll call him here in a little bit. We'll let him know our intentions. All right. I just want to make sure we're not icing up. It almost looked like our AOA was a little bit off. <laughs> New Phoenix features are absolutely unreal. I'll have to watch them, man. I know that video, I saw someone send me a video that came out earlier today. Sweet. I mean, one one question. What would be your recommended altitude for the U.S. airport is for the need for the what altitude? Yeah, we're just about to call you uh, Torquemont one. So uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to join a 30 DME arc off of Cold Bay to the south. Uh, once we join that arc, we'd like to descend to 3,000. And we're going to remain on the 30 DME arc to the south until reaching the 348 radial. Or actually, correction, it's going to be the, uh, it's gonna be the 148 radial. So the 328 inbound to Cold Bay. Uh, we're going to do a drop just past Cold Bay at 3,000 feet, about three miles from the VOR, and then uh, we'd like to climb back up and return to Dutch Harbor. Okay, Turk 1 1, Roman here. Uh, join the radio uh, 226 of Cold Bay VOR. So DME are 30 nautical miles to the south, and join the 148 inbound. And uh, call me when you are ready for your descent, or I will. But you know when I can calculate for major descent more open. Okay, uh, copy that. We will join the uh, the uh, 30 DME or 30 DME arc to the south, and uh, we'll let you know when we're ready to start down toward one one. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> so if we're looking at our radials right now, we are on the two four two three zero. We're on the two three zero radial which is really the 01050. Yep, which makes sense. 050 inbound, perfect. So to join 30 miles out, 
we got to we'll probably start uh, your turn at... Your at pop, just catch it up to uh, Torque 1-1, one, one, uh, we have visual now. We'll start it at 45, or sorry, five, we'll start it at 35, one, we'll start our turn at 35. This is going to be quite the challenge here, folks. Now, and if you look at the map, uh, say again for, uh, zero, zero, Papa. I that. we got to make sure we, uh, yes, the whole point uh, of this arc in, uh, and DME is we got to go through the bay uh, here and VFR on top of the clouds. Uh, any zero, of zero, these zero, mountains. Zero, yeah. zero, eight, 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 so, eight, and that radial eight, inbound eight, is right here. So if we join too early, we go into Frosty eight, Peak. Eight, eight, if we join too late, we're going to be way out over the bay and we're going to drop our vehicles in the water. So we don't want to do that. So the trick is going to be... Yeah, here's our, you can almost see it here if I can zoom if it'll load. Okay, so yeah, we are going to drop it basically right here along this road. If we calculate it right, this is our this is our drop zone right about here. There's actually a radar facility here. And this is actually, a, this is like a real location for the, uh, I believe the Air National Guard's up here. So, uh, not totally unrealistic. Anchorage about two point four. we have no just Join the uh, intercept 226 uh, radial, like so we just gave you the clearance, 226 radial, 30 DMR to the south, intercept 148 uh, inbound to CDB, call for descent 3000, cool. Message received. Alright, right. so that's our plan. We're playing DCS now, just about. Just about. Alright, so the 226 uh, would be... Let me move NAV2 around. Course select two. So two two six is going to be zero four six. All right. So let's go ahead and select our heading mode. And I'm going to select course one. VOR one. I also want you to be um, active zero four six. Now we're going to heading bug slightly to the right to join this 226 inbound. He basically needs us on a radial to start down. Any chance for Phoenix Live watch along? <laughs> Hustle Bossy, you think I got the capacity to do a Phoenix watch along right now? It's wild, man. I'm sure there'll be 42 videos on the Phoenix video release. I'm sure there'll be plenty of videos on the video. We will do plenty of streams when it comes out. I do like that they have the uh, compressor stall stuff model. It's pretty cool. I didn't see any 319s though. Were there any 319s in that re press release? Oh, <laughs> Ryan Pick, so yes. Uh, Alright, so we're waiting for this to center up. We're joining the 226 inbound, uh, Team Vodka, or the 046. How's the PMDG DC6 pilot? Uh, hey Ryan, I don't, I, I don't think I've actually ever flown the DC6. Microsoft Flight Sim. I never got it, which is a surprise. Because it so sounds like something that I would like, but I don't know. <clears throat> we do need a podcast on it. <laughs> why, why do you want a podcast on the podcast? I'll break it down when it comes out and we can, we can mess with it. That's what I'm excited for. Did, was there, somebody said something about a, uh, they hinted at a Boeing release. I didn't get to watch the Phoenix video. I only watched like maybe two minutes. I skipped through. I saw we were talking about icing on the fan blades and all that. Um, and I was I was kind of skimming through to see if I could see a 319. They said work is going very very well on 319, and this uh, long delay on B2 will make the 319 actually easier to finish. Oh, very cool. All right, cool. I'm excited about that. I'm very excited about that. All right, I'm gonna come a little bit more to the right so we can hurry up and join this radial. All right, here it comes. We're joining up now. You can see it moving. I find it amazing that videos speculating about other videos are longer than the original video. <laughs> uh, 
It was especially interesting, especially about the crosswind engine stall surge. Uh, we need a real 320 drive. We need a real, not the fake German ones. <laughs> oh, man. I've only had a... I've never even had a surge on start for crosswind limitation. We were very close one time in, gosh, what was that airport? Uh, the one where you approach and there's a Guatemala City. There's Guatemala City. I had, uh, we were very close to our limit on the crosswind for engine start there. But other than that, I've never had an issue starting up the IEs. You can call. You can uh, you can haul quite a bit of powdered sugar to and from South America with the DC6. <laughs> I bet, man. I bet. All right, there comes our radio. We're pretty much centered up. I'm gonna go ahead and select radio nav. It's gonna S turn out to the right a little bit. Don't go that far. Don't go that far. Come back. Come back. Come back, baby. I might just have to stay in heading mode. I think I'm more accurate than the autopilot, which is probably realistic. These older airplanes, man. We have a three knot crosswind, so it's not crazy, but why are you going so far out there, boy? Easy does it. It says only three knots of crosswind, but I don't believe it. Alright, now we're coming back to the left now. Alright, I was going to say, if it stayed on that heading, I wasn't going to believe it. Okay, so... 35 miles... I tell you what, let's make it 37 Under miles. We'll start the turn. Uh, we are on the radial 226 inbound, 66 miles to go. Uh, requesting stop climb 170. Why don't we watch the video now, Cruz? Uh, oh, because it's a. I'll get copyright strike. I'd have to get clearance from. Uh, from who released it? Phoenix Simulations YouTube page, the actual Phoenix Sim page. I'd probably have to speak with one of them to do a breakdown on it. Or else it would be like, you know, I can't just, I can't just watch someone else's video on my channel. <laughs> now that I have you here, can you do an auto land in the crosswind in the 320? Yes, of course, Sean. There's crosswind limitations dependent on the model of 320, 19, 20, 21, the engine that you're using, um, and also the surface condition of the runway will all be factored into crosswind limitations for an auto land, but you bet you can do it. You definitely can do it. It's actually because, so for our fleet, we have a, such a variety. Roger, beginning descent to 3,000 toward 111. All right. Um, come over here. Let's go to altitude. I'm going to scroll down, select 3,000 feet, enter U, altitude off. 2954 torque 1 1, thank you. All right, and let's go here. And we're going to select 2,000 vertical speed. That's up, that's up, that's up. All right, we'll intercept the radio call for the MAR. Uh, that's we're up. We're actually going to maintain uh, 200 for this uh, for observation of above uh, for uh, 390 pop up. So we'll follow the same course as uh, for one one. Okay, rolling your rear shift to report, maintain a flight level 200. All right, maintaining 200. Uh, Gosh dang it, now I had to hit that button again, so now I killed my autopilot. Why can't I, like the pitch ladder wasn't working. Let's re-engage. Hopefully she'll re-engage. We're gonna we have to have autopilot for this or we're gonna be screwed. Engage. Heading um, select. Not on frequency negative level twenty four for the low three six zero And then for the three six zero I'll one eight four. Level three six zero Alright, we're back at it. Starting our descent to three thousand feet. We're fifty three miles out. My brightness is all the way. Enter Air Chief 195. Air Chief 105. Let's bring that power off. Uh, firstly, I'd like to apologize for the issue. And secondly, we're going to have to request to return to the field. We seem to have had 
Magic Barrel Ref is set, 10001 on the descent. Okay. Okay. You find this plane is way more entertaining than listening to you talk about another plane that you are not flying currently. John, I appreciate you, man. This is a lot of work. This airplane's a lot of work. The stream's a lot of work. But when's the last time you watched a streamer do a cargo drop in a C-160 Transall? Cold Bay, Alaska. All right, we are 48 miles. We need to be Johnny on the spot with our turn. So I'm going to move my heading bug to the right. We're going to be about 90 degrees right. And at 37 miles, I will start the turn. I'm going to continue to try to slow down a little bit. About 200 knots would be about what I want. Two, you start going above 200 knots, your radius of turn is going to be I need to give ourselves more leeway. So I'm going to slow down because if you slow down, your turn radius is going to be smaller. It'll help us turn on to that 30 dm yard. Now we might overshoot, undershoot a little bit, but we'll correct. We got to, it's helping us out. Real world life, six knots of wind is good. If we had uh, some crazy winds up here, it'd be, it'd be a little bit more challenging. Altimeter 29054. Yeah, we got to set in millibars. I just did magic mirror ref key. I ain't got time to do conversions right now. Uh, are we dropping flares? We'll drop flares uh, at the completion of the drop, or before and after the drop, we'll drop flares. You guys want to see that too. Now the good thing is, it looks like we're going to be able to see. This mountain's a little obscured over here, but we're going to see for the most part where we're going. When I did the practice sector the other day, it was all IMC, hard IMC. It was <laughs> spicy. All right, how are we doing? Uh, that looks good, all right. Internet's doing good, everything's doing good, all right. 42 miles at 37, we'll start an immediate right turn and we'll begin our twist 10, turn 10 on VOR 1, which I have selected. So the second one, I wish I could hide VOR 2. I can't get rid of, I could put it on TACAN or VOR 2, but I can't get rid of it. So I'll just have to kind of stay where it is. We're out of 11,000 for three. We're slow down about 180 knots. That's even better. I got a few seconds here. Let's get the rest of our lights. Uh, position lights will stay on. Uh, wing lights will come. Man, well, wing lights will stay off, actually. But I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll turn on our, uh, actually, we'll keep all our lights off. Keep them off as is. All right, 30 miles. Number 37 DME, we're going to select heading and we're going to start a right turn and begin our twist 10, turn 10 on the arc. Yeah, VFR will certainly make this easier. Oh, gosh, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to hide that yoke though. I hope we have enough fuel for this. That whole uh, traffic pattern for the, the observation aircraft to join up with us cost us a pretty penny. I, haven't, I don't even see what those observation aircraft are. Yeah, King Air doing an ops flight around us. All right, 38.643. I'm getting nervous. Heading select is on. That Anchorage uh, Torque 11, we're joining a 30 DMV arc to this house. Torque 11, Royer. Royer, all right. Turn 10. Twist 10. We're on the turn, baby. 8.3 for 3,036 miles. We're actually turning way. Look at that. See that wind? Turn yeah. 10, twist 10. See how that wind changed? So, so much for being easy mode. Because of that wind shift. I'm actually going to put course two on uh, TACAN so it doesn't interfere with me there. I'm going to shallow out that turn because we all of a sudden got a 30 knot wind shift and we're 36 miles out from the arc. Yeah, it was way too quick. And well, freaking 30 knots came out of nowhere. But it's actually better to be a little bit but see how tight this is here like we really don't have a lot of wiggle room to play with in here we got to get on that 30 dme we're 35 
I'm gonna come, I'm gonna actually come to the left a tad. Of course, I'm gonna move out a little bit. Confirm you have the buggy, but you got inside your five o'clock, seven miles. We actually joined about 35 miles. Uh, Apron, we got them down there. We're just beginning the uh, 30 DME arc turn as well. Uh, for zero zero five five. Uh, Bill, no, I'm keeping an eye on it. We, what did we say it was going to be? Uh, he gave it to me in clearance, which is good. It was the 148, so that's going to be the 328. So we've got some time to go, Bill. we got some time to go. So I'm not going to dial it in just yet. If I had a good FO, he would dial it up for me on the NAV2 right now. Um, but since I'm still cutting the corner here, we're not quite the perpendicular. I'm still cutting down to 30 DME, but check this out. We are, like, right over right over some terrain that's awesome this is awesome all right pay attention 33 miles we're shaving that we're shaving it down we're shaving it down i'm gonna let it keep coming down almost 500 feet to level off let's get the flares armed so to arm our flares we're gonna go ahead and put it on uh react we're gonna turn the masters on we're ready Roger that. Yeah, we picked up that wind shift too. We're uh, we're adjusting. All right, getting that power back in here. We're level at 3,000. All right, here we go. Now we're approaching 30 DME. Let me get my course turned more. We're gonna come all the way. Out. Let's make it zero one zero. And I'm gonna just stay on this heading for just a tad longer. You see, we're 31.2. Left is towards the station. Right is away from the station. But we've got a 30 knot crosswind here, so. We don't want to be, we can't be completely perpendicular. Speed 200. We'll bring it back a tad. Alright, that looks good. Let's go up here. Alright, cabin is coming down. That is good. The rate of change knob is not modeled. Is it? I want to increase it. As much as she's, as much as she's got. pressurized or depressurized how we look oh we're 28 miles come to the right see I got distracted there for a few seconds that was a beautiful ride. attention attention to workers in the vicinity of Cold Lake area block of altitude from 3,000 feet up to 5,000 feet hard block this an airdrop coming in the radial 148 uh, 30 nautical miles no, TFR wow, there's a TFR active for us. How cool is that? Bosco, you're right, man. Dude just put a TFR up for our airdrop. That is awesome. We got to fix this DME. 27.5 is no good. We're, it was okay to be a little further out. Being too tight is no, no good. Too tight is no good. So we're correcting with our heading mode here. If I select course two, uh, no, view on one, you stay there. Now I need to select course two. I'm going to put it on uh, view R2, and we're going to spin course two to the 148. What did we say that's going to be? 348. Nope. Yeah. No. 328 inbound. All right, 328 is set. Now I'm going to go back to my course one. So when view R2 is centered, that's when we're on it. I'm going to turn 10 on the course one here again. But we're going to let it, we're not going to turn the aircraft yet. You can see I'm just going to kind of let it fly away from the VOR. Bring that power back a little bit, a little bit fast still. Stand by for 20. All right, well, we made it through that hard part. now. The main reason we got to be on this this radial, we can't overshoot or undershoot, because if we undershoot this radial inbound, we'll go right into this mountain. 
So we got to make sure we don't undershoot. One zero five, turn left heading two zero zero. Three two six. No, fake news. It's uh, three two eight inbound. Three two eight. He he gave it to me in text form, which is awesome. He gave me a clearance in text form so I can reference it. So it's a one four eight inbound, a radial one four eight inbound. So that's going to be. Let me double check. Yeah, three two eight, which is what we have set up uh, on VOR two. We're twenty seven five and increasing slowly. Now, if we go back over here to our map mode, uh, well, not really, it's Anchorage kind of a, kind of a cheeky mode. You can see here, we joined a little bit too far, we recorrected, and now we're, we're pretty stable inside here. And we're gonna basically arc right, right in through here. All right, I'm going to continue to turn my VOR1 so I can stay oriented with the VOR, but I'm not turning the aircraft yet. You can see I'm staying on this heading. We're going to kind of roll our way out here. I think when we get about 29, I'll very slowly start to uh, come over. It's just the 24 knot wind out of nowhere just blew our whole thing out of, out of whack. We had zero knots of wind, and then we came through like 5,000 feet, and then 30 knots pushing us away. So... We got a little hosed on that. That's all right. Oops, wrong one. You're directly above me at 200, Team Vodka? Let me take a peek. Team Vodka, can you drop, can you see my flares? Let's go ahead and drop flares, see if Team Vodka can pick, a, pick up our flares. So flares are primed. Let's go ahead and issue a fire order. We're over the water. Flares out. That's one salvo. Pretty cool. All right, 29 miles. Let's go ahead and bring it in now. Let's go to IFR mode, I'm not cheating. 29.4. six. so now we're perpendicular with a 20 knot wind. I like that. Let's continue to turn course 10 more. Let's go 340 on the course. Back to heading. Roll it perpendicular. We got 20 knot wind. It'll help kind of correct that point three. Point three plus or minus is your is kind of your leeway. You can see we're, we're getting real close to our inbound. So now we need to start slowing up. Remember we want to be about 160 knots. Actually, we'll probably be about 140 knots for this drop. We'll go flaps one once we get down there. Yeah, you can see we're getting pushed out here. You see that? What's our ground speed? Uh, ground speed is 214. I'm trying to see if I can get a time estimate to drop. All right, I'm going to scroll course. To, we're going to just scroll it all the way. We're going to center it up, VOR1, VOR2. So 328, this is our this is our baby right here. This is our inbound. Keep bringing that power back. Advised torque one one. We're about four minutes from drop. Okay, inspecting the drop at uh, two three two nine or so. I'm sorry, two three two two three three zero zero. Two three three zero zero. Uh, torque one one. We'll have to. We might have to adjust that here once we turn inbound. All right, our CDI is alive. I'm going to start the turn. Uh, 
I'm going to bring up the EET. Uh, turn right heading 245, maintain vision separation with terrain, and uh, we'll advise once we have the uh, field in sight. 195. Actually, if I go. And then if I go flight plan, hold on, I want to see if I can get a better ETE for this guy. DTO, CDV, enter, go. I was trying to see if it would give me an updated uh, estimate in route time. At Anchorage, uh, torque 1-1, one, one. we're going to have to advise drop time. Uh, stand by when we get a new calculation here. We had another wind shift. Alright, so our wind is going to be direct 12 knot headwind now. I thought it would give me an EET, it's not. So let's go ahead and go back to FMS VOR1. Let's go ahead and go radio inbound. Nav 1 out is armed. We've got to start opening up the door of the cabin now. Let's go ahead and go uh, horn on. We're going to go with the uh, red circuit. We're going to open the ramp. And it's starting to rain, of course. All right, the ramp is opening up. All right, with the ramp open, we'll go ahead and kill the horn. We've got the red circuit on. 3,000 feet, 180 knots, we're 24 miles out. Uh, we need to drop at three miles. So our ground speed is, let's see, time to go. Of course, it's not good. Uh, our ground speed is 165. Geez, 6, 12, 18, so that's three miles a minute, approximately, just under three miles a minute. Someone do the math for me, 22 miles, seven minutes? That seems a little long. <laughs> well, Miss V1 just got, uh, just got pounced from the, from Nightbot. No caps, no caps. Four code one of one now for your request. Three nautical miles drug will be in the next five uh, minutes fifty five seconds. That's a problem that uh, that checks out toward one one. Alright. So he's captured one of one, you're clear to drop at uh, two three three four zero. Clear to drop two three three four zero to torque one one. Alright, thirty four Z is our official drop time. You can see here we're at 30. How cool is that? All right, we're slowing to 180. Let's go ahead and bring it back a little bit more. Actually, no, let's keep it right at 80 so we don't adjust our speed. Right before drop, we'll slow it up, and then we'll go green. We probably opened up a little bit early. How cool is this? <laughs> so, like, all right, let's go ahead. Thrust set, I need you to come uh, undo all the... Uh, Undo the straps for me. Undo the straps. It'd be cool if there was a like a light in here. Wow, this is. <laughs> Let's do. I'm gonna save a view. Hold on, I gotta save a view. I gotta save a view in here. I'm gonna save. I mean, you probably wouldn't be standing here, but I'm gonna save this view right here. Left control niner. All right, so we can come back to it. Wait, three minutes to drop, three minutes to drop. Airship 105, therefore, uh, Deutsch uh, Harbor is at your, um, 2 o'clock, 20 miles, confirm you have... Three minutes to drop, three minutes to drop. Uh, I don't oh, have the airport one. side, but I do see the uh, mountain range that will have to go around together, 195. Okay, Royer, uh, if you'd like to come and see the pressing heading, uh, this heading will, uh, Let's fire one more set of flares. Uh, Three we'll minute warning. Heading and enemy turn off on the final. We'll uh, go visual from there.
don't jump, no shoot. Yeah, we don't, we're not jumping. All right, let's double check, see where we're doing here. We're still 170 knots, we're 15 miles out. Got another two minutes to drop. How's our fuel? We're going to have to transfer some sea tank fuel. We're going to have to do a fuel transfer after the drop, too. We're going to have to do a fuel, fuel uh, transfer. All right, I'm going to prep uh, for cargo dropping here. So we are primed up. We've got our drop position. That's the horn. 13 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles to drop. So we want to drop it just past the airport dropping it between the airport and the VOR. But we're pretty much right on. Will replay be available? There's nothing to replay on this one. Nothing to replay on this one. Let me go back here to our... Wow, this is be a sweet view right here. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you stood on the back deck of a C-160 at uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator? Uh, I love this sim, man. This is too fun. This is way more fun than talking about compressor stalls. Alright, 11 miles. We don't want to drop it on the airport. <laughs> we got to drop it after. 10 miles. Let's do a check of our wind here, do a wind check. Uh, straight headwind, perfect. It's almost like I planned that. At seven miles, we'll slow and extend flaps. Morton's Lagoon on the right, fantastic place for catching reds in July. Under, Dude, hook me up. Hook me up, man. out. Three miles to drop. So yeah, our drop zone is pretty much right there. I think. Hopefully we don't drop it in the pond. But, uh, taxpayer dollars, baby. I probably could have thrust set. I, what I was thinking, though, is I could have had an ETE to the to the VOR on the in the FMS, and then I could have just you know three miles, three miles a minute. It would have been one minute, so I could have done the math on that. Attention to all aircraft in the vicinity of Colby. Uh, drop in in the next sixty seconds. Count down now. All right, five miles, close enough. We're going to go green. We got the green. Green. Four point four. So we're going to drop the first one right. We're going to drop the first one at about, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll go right to three and then we'll Eight, we'll do a 3.5, we'll drop the first one. All right, there goes one drop.
There goes one. <laughs> Drop the front. There she goes, VBL number two. Drop complete. Let's power it up, maybe. Let's empty the flare. Oh, we can't. I thought we could empty them. All right, flaps are coming up, speed's coming up. Anchorage, torque 2-1, drop complete, drop complete, request uh, direct to Dutch Harbor. Okay, torque 1-1, Royal Mission, accomplished, maintain a pressing heading, climb at time level 2-0-0, remain a pressing heading until clear, Ethenburg Lagoon. All right, present heading, till clear the lagoon, climb flight level 2-0-0, torque 1-1. One, one. All right, we got to close it up, too. Closing up. Lights are off. Closed up. Let's climb it up, baby. So we come down here to our FMS. We're going to go out, down, 200, enter, and pitch up. That no, That's down, dang it. We're in the climb. Power it up. Archiever 080 Papa, right heading 060. Right there, 60, right street, the right there, Papa. I think that's the lagoon right there. Alright, so they are all seated. You can see our cargo weight dropped way down. We're going to have to deal with this fuel here. We're getting critically, not critically, we're getting pretty low on A and B. It doesn't burn from C. Okay, one one, uh, left heading, the more D, if you don't have the other waypoint. Mike, Oscar, Romeo, Delta, India, turn left heading 240. Left turn uh, 240, we'll plug it in uh, for a torque 1-1, one, one, thanks. 40 on heading 240. So we're turning 240. We're climbing up to a 200. And we're going to go ahead and safe the flares. Now we need to come down here and see if we can do some flight planning. Uh, let's go back to the return. Let's go back to flight plan. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Change. We need to do CDB 2. 40, which is Mike, Oscar, Romeo, Delta, India. Confirm, Morty, DTO, go. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to select uh, VOR1 to FMS1. Doesn't look like it's updated though. Uh, there's Morty off in front of us though. We can fly in heading mode. All right, we're 8,000, climbing 200. Oh, I need to turn this way to the radar on too. Whoa, what was that all about? Let's go ahead and go uh, mission mode on. Archive 080 Papa, right heading 240 is approved. Um, if you have uh, the position Morty, we're clear flight right the morning, Mike, Oscar, Romeo, Delta, India. Can I think go any faster? Uh, no. Right three, two, Not four, yet. Zero, direct Morty, Air Chief, zero, zero, Papa. All right. I'm going to flip fly live around. All right, so fly live should update here. We're going Morty. We're nine, climbing two, zero, zero. Now we need to move some fuel. This is going to get spicy because I don't really know this fuel system. It's pretty... Uh, Pretty complex, so we need to we need to move C tank fuel to B and A. I'd like to move it to B. So plan direct track. I don't know why I can't get a. Point eight. No. Let's try to figure out why we couldn't get. 
uh, Morty on there. What's that? Oh, jeez. We pressurize with differential pressure. Climb, baby, climb. fine now we're climbing out we're gonna fix that diff press don't worry about it we all have oxygen put your supplemental oxygen on if you need it why are my ears bleeding we're gonna have bigger problems if we don't figure out this fuel transfer all right so we need to go C tank pumps on these need to come on fill a fill a why does it say full let's see what's happening whoa that was interesting Okay, eight was not that full. What was it? Nine? That must have been a bug. I'm gonna put it what the other tank is at, because it was pretty much what the other tank had. So we'll put it right about there. So now C is dropping into A. Cool. We're going C to A on both tanks. So we're transferring fuel, because you can't burn from the C tank. My goodness, this is quite the adventure. Russ I don't think there's a way to uh, check where they landed. I actually don't know what happens when they hit the ground. I, that's a good question. I've never looked. <laughs> I don't know how you would look. Uh, I'm curious now. Someone go back and do BDA. All right, let's get her. This needs to come up and stow. and then Padu, so that looks good there. How's our fuel transfer? Our fuel transfer looks good. We're moving fuel. Now, I don't know if you can move it to B. I think it can only go to A. I don't think I can move it to A. Pretty sure they just fall a certain distance and then disappear? Probably. <laughs> Brian's gasping for air. No, he's fine now. Look. Look. Awesome, thank you so much. Is he signing off? Now? Dude, that okay, that ATC guy was the number one ATC guy I've ever experienced on uh, flight thank simulation. You, Dude set up a TFR everything. That was insane. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Alright, we're eighteen, we're out of eighteen, let's hit magic barrel ref key. Let's just get back home now. Let's just get back home. 1013 on the millibars. 1013. Alright, we're 19.2. Please level off. Let's go. Wing 4, I'm flying today to Guatemala. A real flight. Are you coming? We're all empty. Nothing left. Alright, altitude mode looks like it's captured. That should come down. Our sea tanks are almost completely transferred. We'll get rid of that here in a second. 
All right, we're leveling two zero zero. All right, we're two zero zero. Uh, C tanks are empty. Let me just make sure we get every last drop out of them. Forty-five pounds unusable in each tank, or kilos, I guess. So let's go ahead and kill the pumps. We'll close the valves. Now I don't know if you get rid of the red. I think those stay on. But uh, yeah, our C tanks are empty. We got A and B. I don't know someone in chat I don't know if you can move it from B to A A and B are the primary tanks so we'll see we'll see what happens hopefully we'll be fine by the time we get back there it's not over yet we still have to shoot a freaking NDB alpha in the <laughs> Dutch Harbor oh why did I sign up for this I appreciate y'all hanging out with me tonight on this. This is definitely a different, uh, definitely a different vibe. So if you've ever, if you've never seen a content creator do an airdrop, then uh, hit the like button. We also should turn on prop sync. Let's see if we can sync them up here a little bit. Save a little fuel. Nice and stable. On our way back to Dutch. You're not doing the NDB team vodka. If I can just see, if I can get visual, I won't do it either. But Thomas Ray says you'll be doing a crap ton more when the C-130J comes out in DCS. Oh heck yeah, man! I am. I cannot wait for that C-130 do pro to do this. So imagine doing this. Would you guys? Let me ask you this. I know most everybody here in the chat is a commercial flight simmer commercial flight sim fan would you watch this style of stream if we were doing this in a c-130 not in the friendly skies over dutch harbor and cold bay but in an actual combat zone where we could actually get shot down and the stream would have to end would you want to watch that content because it's still flight simulation but there's a c-130j super highly modeled super high fidelity coming out to digital combat simulator which i still think is the number one uh, flight simulator on the market as far as uh, just as far as everything D nothing can beat DCS as good as Microsoft Flight Sim is DCS still takes the cake as far as fidelity aircraft and uh, flight dynamics would you want to watch that because it's I know this is Microsoft Flight Sim channel and it might be a struggle to get the algorithms to allow DCS content but it would be definitely interesting Bomb Tech, what are you talking about? I've done it in real life. Hell yeah, Bomb Tech. Well, Bomb Tech will be coming aboard then. <laughs> we're going to have to, at Bomb Tech, we're going to have to send you, uh, send you back to the, uh, what is it, the, not the medic, what is it, the, what's the freaking, what do they call it, the, uh, I keep wanting to say morgue, we don't <laughs> want to send you to the morgue, the dock, what is it, the flight surgeon. Oh, I'm uh, we need to have Bomb Tech go fix his ears. Bomb Tech and AJ Funari have just blown out their ears from the uh, pressurization on this flight. But do a second channel? I thought about that, Fubar. I thought about that. AJ Funari, thank you for the $3 super chat, man. I've missed your super chat. Appreciate you, dude. We know you're loving this. <laughs> um, best turboprop. You know what, AJ? It's, it's pretty dang good, man. I think the sounds, I wish the sounds were a little bit more bassy. I feel like they changed the sounds and made them a little less visceral, you know? I think they used to be a little bit better, but it's not terrible. All right, is that guy, is Senator still online? Yeah, he's still online. So I guess he wasn't saying goodbye to us. So uh, what we need to do is, can we go, can we pick up the Dutch Harbor NDB? Remember, we had it on number one, uh, which it is. Let's see if we can uh, add, let's see if we can get him. That's in our Torque One One request on uh, Direct Dutch Harbor. Corkscrew approach. That would be pretty sweet. The 
did he sign off? Oh yeah, he did sign off. Okay, so he did sign off. What are we doing? We're going to Unicom. So let's go uh, radio comm transfer 122.8. Now we're going to do some NDB track and watch this. We're going to switch uh, this to, we'll do it in, we'll go back to HSI mode. FMS1, no, 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 ADF1, baby. ADF1, heading mode, track and direct to the Dutch Harbor NDB. Dutch Harbor, Dutch Harbor traffic, torque 1 1, type C 160. Proceeding direct to Dutch Harbor will set up for the NDB Alpha, unless we can pick up the field. We're at uh, 200. Alright, so we're doing NDB tracking, direct to. Let me get out my Navigraph approach chart just in case we gotta shoot this. <laughs> Gosh, if we have to shoot at NDB Alpha. Brief it up here, so we'll, in case we can't see it, basically what we have to do, we're going to fly directly to the NDB, then we're going to turn outbound 351, we're going to drag the tail, drag the head, I can't remember, I have to see it happen live, uh, all the way out, then we'll do a minute turn, procedure turn back inbound, and your minimum descent altitude for category, we'll go C safe, we'll call it 2300 feet, uh, for a circle approach back 231, you can basically cross over the field, circle in here and land. So it's super spice. Uh, we'll take a look at the weather when we get there. I wish we had a DME though. So we need to fix this uh, NDB situation or this FMS situation. Let's see if we can fix this. In order for this to be the best plane, AJ, I need this to work. So flight plan, PADU, DTO, go. All right. I want to do course select number two. Uh, number two won't let me do FMS. So let me go course select one. See, it won't. It won't change for some reason. Oh, Navigraph on screen. Thank you. It's like it won't let me recycle. Like I can see it right there. Oh, you know what? I know why. Duh. GPS mode, brothers. Check this out. No? <laughs> Alright, disregard. Uh, Padu, DTO, go. Two, two, zero, and zero. See, it's, it's, I think it, it's lost our position or something. Okay, so disregard. I lied. Leave it in map mode so we can kind of see it. I think that's a bug. We'll go back to VLOC. Fifty miles, about fifty miles out. All right. So with that, um, actually. Side. What was the Dutch Harbor? Wasn't there a DME too? 13.9. Radio nav. Let me swap you over. Just a DME. Interesting. So let's put 13.9 on nav 2 for DME. 13.9 for nav 2 DME. I'll spin that course around. Course select 2. We'll spin you all the way around. select one on ADF. 
And if we put the NAV2 course inside of the ADF needle, we've basically made ourselves VOR. All right, so ADF, and now I need to go course select two and make you go to the right. Right about there, 90 miles out. 90, no, that doesn't make sense because it's, yeah, yeah, it is, 90 miles out. Not really good to see you, man. I've never actually learned ADF navigation in real life. I only know push head, pull tail, <laughs> flight and sight. Awesome, man. Yeah, the uh, ADF is, it's, folks get pretty nervous about it, but it's actually very simple. It's such an inaccurate tool. <laughs> well, not inaccurate, it's just, it's, it's not a precision instrument, so it gives you a lot of leeway in, uh, in how you navigate with it. Can you fly heavy iron DCS B-52s? I don't think there's any yet. Then the tail end thing looks like a giant wall, I know. Trans wall, pretty much. 66049. This was actually a... Uh, uh, what's the name? It's like a weird... It's like a tiny C-160. There's a name for it. This is a real airplane. It's the Lear and DCS. Check out my rear view mirror. I don't see you, Team Vodka. But where are you at? You gotta get closer. You gotta tighten up that formation. Fly Navy be all over it now. C-27, is that it? It might have been. C-27 Spartan? Maybe. I don't see you yet. You're two and a half miles behind? Dude, that's so far. You're, you're, you're the size of my empennage. You need to get a little bit closer. Tighten up that formation. C-123, that's what I meant. Yeah, C-123. What's the name of that C-123? Because one, didn't one just crash? Uh, not just crash, but the, the pilot jumped out of it. Said. No, it's not a C. No, it's not the C-123. No, that's not what it was. CASA, that's it. The CASA 212. CASA 212, I think. Not 235. CASA 212. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the CASA 212 is uh, what this liver is based off of. Only more reason to get more sim gear. I mean, I've got, I've got enough gear for DCS. What I would need to do is I would need two computers. I would need another computer for DCS because it just, it'd be too many peripherals to have up at the same time. You know, it'd just be too much can't be switching peripherals around the whole time. 77 miles out. That's kind of cool flight track here. So yeah, we took off. We did our turn. He joined us on the downwind. We came here. We shot the arc. You can see where we it got pretty tight. This is why you wanted to be at 30 miles. It should have been pretty much right here. We turned a little early. That wind shift pushed us out. We corrected inbound on the arc. Joined the arc. Pretty decent here. Not the best, but decent enough. This was good, nice and straight inbound for the drop, past the lagoon, outbound to Morty, and back. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, this type of flying reminds me of uh, like doing D old, like DCS flying where you do a, uh, not close air support, but like a combat air patrol or a cat mission and you, you fly for three or four hours and tank and you don't engage a single bandit and you go back and land it's a different level of satisfaction like you know every time you complete a flight you get a certain level of satisfaction this this type of flying is completely different it, it, it's a completely different level of satisfaction like i i want to land this thing i want to complete this mission park it where we park it right where we started
Make sure you send a positive comment on Ideo regarding ATC tonight. <laughs> Brian, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna not, just because of my track record of complimenting controllers. Uh, but if that controller ever watches the stream, I mean, I feel like he had to be watching it a little bit. He was he was Johnny on the spot with our uh, time updates and stuff. Um, so if you were watching, if you are watching, thank you again, kudos. That was the best virtual ATC experience I think I've ever had on Flight Sim. I mean, and it came completely unexpected for a very niche, a very unique mission, and they did everything. He did everything. He, he joined us up with a flight. He flew me in a pattern to have the rest of the observe, Observation King Airs join up. Um, I think, is that the King Air? That's Team Vanka right there. There's our Ops aircraft right there. He gave us a radial, an arc, a sound clearance. He, he issued a NOTAM and a TFR for our drop. <laughs> Just absolutely stellar, Brian. Absolutely stellar. Like, it was so cool. It was so cool to be part of that. Wrongside, what's up, man? Good evening, sir. Appreciate the work entertainment. Hey, Wrongside. Good to see you, man. Dude, I, I got to watch that video. I know you sent me that video to Phoenix. I, got, I, only, I skimmed through it just before this stream started. But it's been a long night, man. I've been flying around dropping VBLs and stuff, so I'll watch it tonight. Hope you're well, brother. I go back to work. Uh, I was supposed to go Thursday, but I dropped it. I'm not go back. To, I don't go back in to work work until Saturday. So I got some MCO next month, though. Unless I drop it, I might drop it. But I have some MCO next month. We'll be in touch. A speck of dust on your screen. Now oh, there's the king. There he is. Hey, about time our king here joined up. Only two hours later at the end of our uh, flight. What's our mileage? 62, 50 miles will start down. What was his call sign again? Flight chief? Flight Chief, you wouldn't happen to have a meat tower for Dutch Harbor, would you, in that fancy king there? We do, in fact. One moment. Gotta see what kind of what kind of weather we got down there in Dutch. Steven, what's up, my man? Dude, you missed it all, man. It was wild. It was a wild, wild stream. <laughs> I'm sure you've been barbarded with it. Def worth the full watch. I think you'll be impressed. Let me know what you have, and I'll compare to my sketch. See if there will be up opportunity. Sounds good, man. Sounds good, wrong side. We're gonna link up, man. It's gonna happen. Uh, Torque Moon 1, altimeter 2932, wind uh, 340 at 19, gusting 23. Oof. Copy, thanks. You got a ceiling by chance? Uh, see again, you're blocked up. Uh, yeah, what's the, uh, you got a ceiling and visibility down there? Scatter 3000, broken 39, broken 46 CFR. All right, so we're gonna be IMC till we bust down. So we're gonna have to start the NDB, and then we're gonna then we're gonna break through. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna have to, we're gonna fly to the NDB. We're gonna drive it down, dive and drive. Uh, we're 50 miles. It's about ready to start. Let me look at my Navigraph. Maximum or minimum 6,000 feet over the NDB. So let's go ahead and start prepping for our descent. We'll come here to the altitude. Scroll it down, select 6,000. That's in the box. What was that altimeter one more time? Uh, 2932. You got that in millibars? All right, for HP. <laughs> 993. Thank you. All right, 993 for the Q&A. Oh, that changed it up here. Oh, I just learned something. Okay, but you wouldn't do that. You would have left it set, but 993 is set. Uh, let's go ahead and start trickling down though. So I'm gonna disengage altitude mode. Now, it's weird. If you move it, so up actually, this is backwards. I have to click it up. No, it's not. It just seems, it seems weird to move this switch down will pitch the airplane down. 
It just seems opposite as like a regular trim switch. Dutch Harbor traffic, torque 1 1, sending at a flight level 200, 50 miles to the uh, northeast. We're going to fly overhead the NDB 6000, set up for NDB Alpha. I guess it does say down right there, so maybe it's not backwards. It just feels backwards. Airborne firefighting operations could look a lot like this in Microsoft. Oh, yeah, Mr. Anderson, that's a good point, man. We could have some uh, pretty sweet firefighting opportunities. All right, we're going to bring some power off the airplane. Try to keep it fast though. 40 miles, 18.5, 993 is set. We're descending to 6,000 feet. It's French and German. What do you expect? Yeah, true. They don't seem to agree on a lot of things. <laughs> Evening, Captain. How's the C 160? Migs. Good to see you, man. Hey, Migs. It's been an absolute blast of a stream. I'm sure it's not going to be so popular in the YouTubes, but it was probably one of the more fun flights I've done in a while. I had a lot of fun in the ATR, that's why I'm kind of hesitant, but this, to me, 10 times more fun to, want to, to do. I don't know what it's like to watch. Obviously, it's not to watch because not a lot of people watch this kind of stuff on YouTube, but for me, I would rather do this than fly A to B in a 7.3 or a 3.20 any day of the week and twice on Sunday but I know what the algorithm says and I know what YouTube viewership says but sometimes you just got to go against the grain and have a little fun good to see you Mix. hope you're having a good day my man all right 40 miles out at a 15.7 for 6,000 hours do I have in this thing? And I haven't flown it in over a year. That's well, pretty good. 12 hours of flight time in this puppy. Alright, everything is done here. Now there is a HUD. Uh oh. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to crash. Whew. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to have to learn how to fly with the HUD. <laughs> I'm going to turn that off. All right, we're getting ready to go IMC. We're 13.7 for 6,000, 30 miles out. 30 miles, 10,250. That's kind of your block window you want to hit. So we're looking to be right on it. Now we look at our NDB here. You can see it's moving just a little bit off. I'm going to bring up the wind here. This is going to help us. Let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. Come back to that NDB there. We'll be direct to. All right, crossing over the NDB at 6,000. It's going to be immediate. Now you could do a turn in the hold. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to, I ain't got time or fuel for that. So we're going to make an immediate right turn to 351 outbound. 351 outbound after crossing over the NDB. We're getting ready to go through 10,000. Let's come up here. Those stay on. Those are on. We'll get our wing lights on. Formation lights are full bright. Uh, methanol is off. Everything looks good. Our PO heats are still on. Let's get the landing lights and taxi light on as well. And we are in the soup. Trying to keep it fast, 250. Look at the ice flows down there. That's so cool. Oh, now I can't see. Look at that, like the frozen water. I love this sim. To hell with aggregator. So this is quality content. Hey, Mr. Anderson, appreciate you, man. Do a little, uh, thought I could do a little dash cam. So this is cool. This is your ice detector, and this is actually a light filament here in the middle. And it actually it, it illuminates properly. There we go. Look at that. Right next to the whiskey compass. 
Use your current computer to run DCS, a new super PC for Microsoft, preparing for 2024. Brian, I like the sound of that, my man. I do like the sound of that. What are the four levers above your head? Joe, those are uh, main fuel shutoffs. So uh, if you're securing an engine, if I, if I wanted to secure an engine, uh, you could shut off the main fuel supply fuel valves up here. So you've got APU and then I think A, B, and C fuel valves. Something like that. I know the APU is up there. That's why there's four. All right, we're 8,000 for 6,026 miles out. 250 on the speed, baby. Looking good. We probably should shallow this descent out just a little bit. I wish I could, I wonder if you could bind this button. I bet you can. We'll have to figure out what that binding is. Maybe autopilot pitch ref, kind of like the Lear. Do they feather the props, Mom Tech? Well, there's only two engines, so I'm pretty sure they're fuel cutoff levers. And they're mechanically linked, so if I were to pull pull one on this side, it'll pull the one on that side. Yeah, see it says closed and open. And you can dump fuel in this thing too, but we don't need to dump fuel. We need to save all of our fuel. Speaking of fuel, uh, yeah, bees are almost empty. I don't know how to move fuel from A to B, so. <clears throat> Get flight recorder ready. Get one landing today, hopefully, on the replay. They jettison the props. When we did emergency set downs on 130, they were up there. They were in the middle overhead, though. Interesting. I know this. I know this has a. You used to be able to feather it on the ground with the feather pump, right here. But I think it's bugged right now. So the feather pump doesn't work on the ground. But if you shut one down in flight, you can feather it. Image seeker. Good evening. Welcome aboard. I guess it is evening time. Seven fifteen at night. That gone. Probably a lot of strange eyes wandering around. Like, what is this guy doing? All right, there's six thousand feet, eighteen miles out. We are in the soup. Welcome to Dutch Harbor. Ooh, I'm tempted to do a dive and drive right there, but I don't know. I don't know that I feel like we've come this far. Is Dutch over there? I feel like that's a sucker hole. If we get too low, we'll, we'll lose our, uh, we'll lose our NDB. I think that's the harbor right there. Should we do it? No, I don't think that's it because his NDB is showing a little bit more to the right. Yeah, and there's a lot of mountains here. Let's just, we've come this far. We've come this far, let's not crash. Oh, Ryan Vic, I'm so tempted, my man. I'm so tempted. If I was familiar with the area. Migs, thank you for the $7 super chat, man. I appreciate you. We haven't seen so much of it, but what are you most looking forward to in the 24 of anything? Save that in mix. I hope they fix uh, some ground handling, like ground friction, you know, like brake supply and all that. And uh, honestly, bindings. I hope they have a better user interface. I hate binding stuff in Microsoft Flight Sim. Like, it needs to be streamlined, you know? We were talking about this earlier. There's like four or five, there's literally Okay, maybe there's three or four different bindings for autopilot disengage. There's like toggle disconnect, there's autopilot master toggle, there's toggle autopilot auto throttle, uh, there's disconnect toggle. So it just needs to be streamlined with that, which it probably won't change, but one can hope, right? But appreciate the uh, $7 super chat.
if we can get a visual on it, we will dive and drive down with nine miles. And the NDB is pretty much just north of the field. Should we do it, chat? I think the field is right on the other side of this mountain. Let's do it. Screw it. All right, autopilot's coming off. Brakes are coming out. Power's coming down. Let's go. Dutch Harbor traffic, uh, torque one one. We're setting up for attack and approach three one. Check out, check out those brakes. We're gonna scud run down to the water. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 6,000 feet a minute. Look at that. All right, we don't even need that much. Let's go ahead and stow it. This is where we hit the side of the mountain. We're going to stay at 3,000. We're six miles. Let's get rid of the EFV. See out the window. Is it right on the other side of here? Tighten those harnesses in the back. Let's juice it up. Oops. I think it's in here. We're going to... Yes. Yes. I see the crane thing. There's the harbor. So uh, we're setting up. We're going to stay at 1,500 feet and we're going to circle. I got her inside, chat. You're in good hands. We'll maintain about 15 hundo. Let me hit Magic Barrel Ref Key. Yeah, this says 1003. 10, so Magic Barrel Ref Key. For 17 hundo. Let's trickle down a little bit. So yeah, the NDB would take us out over the water and it shoots you in here. And then it brings you right in here and you got to do the circle, which we're still going to do the circle, so we're still going to do the fun part. There we go. All right. Let's slow it up. It is runway 3-1, right? There's the runway. Let's record this whole approach. Recording is on, and it is recording, confirmed. There's that King Air. Dutch Harbor traffic, uh, Air Chief zero at zero, Papa, two mile, short final, three one. Uh, we'll keep it tight. Should we cut him off? Light like you Should we cut him off? He's right there at two miles. Five Swan. Water says do it. Wow, we actually might almost collide. Where'd he go? There he is. Dutch Harbor traffic toward 1 1, short final 3 1. Alright, let's gear down. Watch this. Bring a little speed brake out, and she's gonna slow up like scary fast. Actually, speed brake in is too fast. Breaks out. Stow them. Now this thing, you can absolutely plop this thing. Right on the numbers. Whew, it was tight. Plenty of space, plenty of space. 
It was a 242. I will take it for as tight as that was. I will take it. You want to break? Aerodynamic braking. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn it around. Right on the numbers. I'm excited to see that one. Let's see if we hit it right on the numbers or if we were a tad short. We might have been on threshold. Oh. I didn't know you were going to taxi through me there. I love the looks of those. Look at those freaking brakes and the flaps, man. That is insane. All right, let's clean it up. Oh, I gotta get Take it back to the ramp where it all began. Let's take it back to where it all began and we're gonna shut her down. What a flight that was, huh? It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a v, it wouldn't be a good uh, V1 stream if we didn't take the opportunity to cut off Team Vodka. Alright, we're gonna slow it up here. Technically, we could have. I mean, we were legal because it was a formation landing. Oh, that's the wrong view. All right, let's take her into the ramp. Go low idle. Brakes are set. Autopilot, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that's obviously not the right binding I've got. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all she wrote. Welcome back to Dutch Haba. Whoo, Ace Air 1900C. Yeah, look at that right there. Pretty cool. All right. Replay time. I'm curious to see what happens if we leave it shut off. Let's bring the fuel levers up where they were. I'm sure it's going to be screaming at me here. All right, fuel levers are up. Uh, I don't know what it's going to sound like, so let's just turn it down and hit replay. Oh, wow. Cool. All right. We got the gear coming down. Watch for bomb techs view. See that Orbix, though? That's probably because they well, you've got to buy the Orbix mesh. This was a tight circle. I got to get better with the use of the air brake there. Because, man, when you drop that thing, if you're full, I think if you're anything more than flaps position three and you pop that air brake and you're not diving down, it's like you almost can't arrest it. Like, I wish I had my throttle cam up for that landing so I could have seen when I retracted the air brake. Because it was like I had it out for a little bit there and that when it went real tight on the turn. And uh, I was trying to avoid getting too slow. Man, it's like the descent rate just picks up. Here we go. This is when we decided to cut off uh, Team Vodka. So we're in the turn. Look at that shadow. That's pretty cool. See a little bit of air brake there to slow it down. And I stowed it. 
It's cool. This works good with replay. A little bit of air brake. Here we go. This was the last time. I popped it open, and my sync rate freaked me out, so I immediately closed it. It's going to add power there right away. Oh, right on the piano keys. That actually, that didn't look too much of a smasher. Hold on. It looked like it was almost a smasher, but it, it actually looked like we arrested that descent just in time. I was aiming for the numbers. Oh, that's that's actually a really cool shot. Let me save this here real quick. Turn to do off. I mean, that looks awesome. Let's see here. I mean, I feel like we rolled that on. 243? Oh, my stick shaker's going off. Maybe. That was 100% legal. <laughs> Gustavo, get out of here. 100% legal, my man. We were, on the, we were on the threshold. That is close. It might have been triggering a harder landing, though, because it almost looks like the wheels are doing that sink thing. Let's watch this turn in here and open the window. I bet this was pretty wild. Look at the ships down there. Migs dropping another $13.99 on the Super Chat, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, I don't think I'm speaking just for myself when I say that I really appreciate these streams, man, no matter what the numbers say. Uh, I learned a lot, and the sim is so good looking, damn it, Migs. Hey, dude, I'm right there with you, man. I, I love the looks of this, like, doing these streams and PFR and uh, mixing it up. I appreciate the support. Thanks for the kind words, Mix. Too kind of you. AJ Fugari coming in with another super chat. But AJ, he's going to change his name to AJ Transall Fugari. Team Vodka gets cut off, but not at the bar. Hell no. Well, with now, see. My mother didn't raise no fool. Cut him off in flight sim, but I'm not cutting him off in the bar. All right, y'all, that was fun. Thank you, AJ, for the support. I'm going to roll it back one time. Here you guys can enjoy the full approach. <laughs> Steve Vodka says, after further review, the landing was off size. There is no goal. Now, tell that to Patrick Mahomes. All right, y'all. I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one. We'll probably be back in something super exciting like a 320. Actually, you know what? We need to try the new fly-by-wire flare lock. I think we'll be fly by wire next. All right. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'm B1. Y'all take care. See us in chat. Transel's on final. Cut off Team Vodka for the win. See ya.